now that I got your attention with a heel flip and some freestyle, welcome to Pop's Garage. My name's Aaron. I go by Mr. Dad Skates online. If it's your first time here, thanks for stopping by. I'm just an old guy that talks about skateboarding and rides skateboards a lot. Today, I just wanted to talk a little bit about why I do what I do. And there's really only one premise for this. And as far as I'm concerned, it's still the only rule in skateboarding. And that's why I do it. And it's for fun. It's a three-letter word that starts with F. And everybody should have fun. Um, for me, here recently, I went back and I rewatched for probably the 1,000th time uh, the Bones Brigade video number four, The Search for Animal Chin. Uh, it came out in 1987. And now it was about uh, a year and a half, two years into me riding a skateboard. And it still holds up as one of the best skate videos of all time. And I got to say, it was just a lot of fun to watch it again today. And it reminded me why I do what I do and why I loved watching that as a kid. You know, watching the Bones Brigade at that time and all they did was just had fun with an entire movie. That was all the Search for Animal Chin was. It was all about just having fun with your friends and being out in your skateboard and, and exploring the world because that's the best thing that we can do as skateboarders is go out and explore the world and share that with our friends. And it's the fun that still keeps me going to this day. One thing I noticed in rewatching this movie again for, like I said, like the thousandth time was the complete and utter lack of flip tricks throughout that video. You know, I, I can't look at any recent skate park without seeing a minimum of several kick flips, several tray flips, a couple of heel flips, and some varial heel flips here and there. Um, and that's usually within a, you know, a 10 to 15 minute video. And, you know, looking back, 1987, yeah, guys were doing kick flips out in the streets at those days. I mean, I think by that point I had learned how to kick flip on the Mike Vallely elephant that I was riding at the time. Um, but you didn't see that in video parts until probably I think I remember Ron Allen and seeing him do a double kick flip and um, shackle me not, I think. I'm not sure what year that one came out, but, you know, seeing Ron Allen do a double kick flip in his video part was mind blowing. And even in that, I don't remember seeing anybody doing, you know, even varial flips or tray flips at all. Uh, so to see, to go back and watch a video and notice that I think there may have been one, one or two finger flips um, off of a launch ramp, Tommy Guerrero, um, and maybe a kick flip indie grab on uh, the chin ramp at the end by a uh, cab. But other than that, there were no flat ground kick flips, tray flips, heel flips, none of that in the search for animal chin. And once again, it just reminds me of why I love skateboarding. And it's because it's just fun to do, to go out and to ride around and explore the world that is around you with this silly wooden toy with wheels. But it's awesome to do so. And, you know, when you watch the old skate videos like the Search for Animal Chin, you see these guys were professionals at their time. And they, they still, <laughs> Caballero and uh, Tony Hawk, I mean, those guys are still skating well into their 50s. Um, Ron Allen's got to be close to 60. And, you know, uh, he had a part, I think it came out last year. So just have fun with it. That's the point of all this. It's the fun and the therapy aspect of it for me as an adult now. I don't think I quite understood that as a, a, a kid and a teenager when I was writing back then how much therapy skateboarding was giving me at the time. One other thing that I did notice as I was watching the Search for Animal Chin today the old school boards, I mean, I just called it a skateboard back then. 
but the shape and size of them was so different from what they are today. And, you know, I have one that is, a, it's a shaped board, but it's not like a traditional shape board. It's kind of a, a more modern version of that. It's got a really big nose and pigtail. Um, but it, you know, seeing the old Tommy Guerrero flame, that was my first pro model board that I ever had. And it's kind of making me want to try to get back into, you know, that old school shape board again. Um, I've got an old, you know, a, a Lucero remake, but I don't, again, that's kind of a, the newer switch between, you know, old school shape and moving into popsicle where it was just an old school shape with a really big nose on it. Uh, that, and I don't know if I want to put that one together because it's a really pretty board. Um, but I am thinking about kicking around the, you know, probably this summer, picking up an old school shaped board with some big chunky wheels and some super wide trucks and riding loose trucks, which is going to be weird for me because I'm typically loose up front, medium to stiff in the back unless I'm on my freestyle and then it's just uh, my trucks are rock hard on the freestyle setup but seeing those those guys in Animal Chan and the old boards you know it really gave it's giving me an appreciation for where I came from um, where I've been and where I am now as a skateboarder and you know at the end of the road there's only one thing that matters, you know, when you're skateboarding. Is it fun? If you're new to skateboarding and it doesn't seem like it's a lot of fun at first, you'll get through that. And part of it is that learning curve that is pretty steep at the beginning, you know, going from just sta being stationary to standing on something with wheels that can go really fast at any given second. It, it takes some getting used to. So, you know, if you're new to it or if you're just getting back into it after, you know, a 10, 15 or like, you know, as in my case, 22 year hiatus, you know, it'll come back a little slowly at first and then you'll start to notice, oh my gosh, I can still do some of those old tricks that I used to do. You know, one of my favorite ledge tricks as a kid was a no comply 270 to back tail. And I don't know why. It just was one of those things that you know, once I learned how to lock into that trick, it was easy, it was fun, and it looked cool. And I still try to do that, you know, probably a couple times a month, just to make sure I still have that trick. Um, but it's fun for me now. It, it may not, I, I can probably tell you, I don't remember when I learned that trick. I just remember being able to do it one day, and it became fun. You know, I stopped hitting my shins as much and I stopped falling as much as I progressed as a skater. And the more that I progressed, the more fun I allowed myself to have with it. One thing I will say for sure, if you're getting back into it and you're trying to relearn your tricks, don't push yourself. And if you're new to skateboarding and you're trying to learn tricks, don't push yourself too hard. Um... What I mean by that is, you know, if you're trying to learn a new trick, set a limit for yourself. You know, if it's five tries and you're done, 10 tries and you're done, 20 tries, whatever it is, set a limit and stick to that. You can get burnt out really fast trying to learn a specific trick if that's all you're trying to do. And while I may have done that with a few tricks growing up, I've learned you know, here as an adult skater, um, I can't put as much effort and time and energy into things as I did as a youth, for one, because I'm older, and two, because I just, I literally may not have the time or the physical energy to do it. And when I find that, I, you know, if I'm trying to learn a new trick, if it's a freestyle trick, I might give myself 10 to 15 tries before I move on to something else. Um, if it's flat ground, I don't like to, because it takes a lot more energy. I don't like to expend more than, you know, five to seven tries trying to learn a new trick. And any, as I get older, the number gets smaller and the fewer tricks I try to learn new. Um, 
I haven't tried to learn anything new flat ground wise in a while. I think the last thing that I probably landed uh, that was a new trick for me was a switch heel flip. And I, I just didn't keep it in practice when I got it in. I'll probably get one out every 12 or 13 tries now. But, you know, just having that in the back is another one of those things that, you know, yeah, I, I, I can go back and I can watch that video and or those videos from the switch heel flips that I've done and be like, yep, got that trick. I can mark that one off. And it was fun. Uh, but again, I wasn't trying to put 50 or 100 attempts in in a session um, because one, I just wear you out. And two, you'd get sick of trying to do a trick after a while. And for me, it's that it's got to still be fun if I'm going to keep doing it. And, you know, when you get to a certain point trying to learn a new trick, let's face it, it's not fun when all you do is fall for like an hour straight. So, so taking a break from trying to do, you know, a massive amount of the same trick Take a step back, pause for a few minutes, take a breather, move on to something else. For me, when I get frustrated with, you know, if I'm trying to land a specific trick, if I get frustrated after, you know, four or five tries and I haven't gotten close to it yet, I'll roll away, work on something else for a few minutes, and then come back. Um, a lot of times when I do that, I might get it that first try back. So just know that take a break for a minute. Let your brain settle. Let your body settle. Get the sweat off of you for a minute. Throw some water down the gullet and then go back and try that trick. And if you have the energy to do another three or four sets of that, keep going, man. As long as it's fun for you, that's all that matters. And try to skate within your range. And what I mean by that is I like to skate with guys that are way better than me just because it pushes me at times. But I also have that realistic understanding of where my level of skateboarding is. While I do skate transition, I tend to stay away from vertical surfaces. I never was a vert skater, even as a teenager. I tried it a couple times and I don't know if I just, it didn't, I never really liked it, I guess is what it was. And probably part of that was just because I wasn't good at it. And I didn't have a vert ramp nearby uh, hardly ever. I think I had two opportunities to ride a vert ramp in six, seven years that I skated as a, a kid and a teenager. And, you know, the, the first time, I think it was like an 11 or 12 foot ramp, which is still a big ramp by today's standards. And I was not going to drop in on that. I was watching the other guys I, and I sat on the deck and, and encourage those guys because they were doing stuff that was way beyond me. I'd get them out in the streets and wear them out, but they'd wear me out and run around circles around me while we were on that vert ramps. So, you know, skate within your range. You know, if you like to ride a longboard, ride the longboard. And if what you want to do is just go and cruise, then go and cruise. Uh, but again, you know, as long as it's fun, do it but stay in your lane. I'm going to try to get in another session today. I had one in this morning, uh, late morning, early afternoon-ish, and uh, it was short, maybe 30, 35 minutes, but the humidity here in southern Ohio is brutal again. I woke up this morning, and it was 80 degrees and 96% humidity outside. So, yeah, it, it didn't feel good to skate this morning. Um we're supposed to get some rain showers and it might cool it off a little bit, but it's still pretty muggy here in the garage. Not as bad as it was earlier in the day. So if I can, I'll get another session in. Just remember the only rule in skateboarding, and that's to have fun. And know that you're never too old to ride, so shut up and skate already. <laughs>